Hi, welcome to the seventh episode of Understanding EEG. In this episode, we will talk about fundamentals of EEG. This is Imad Al Alim, Biomed Researches, Middle East Medical Information Center and Directory, Epilepsy Awareness Program founder and publisher. We will start this show by introducing the EEG machine to our respected viewers. The electroencephalogram or EEG machine, it's a device used to create a picture of the electrical activity of the brain. The test done through the EEG machine is causing the recording or is obtaining the recording of the electrical activity of the human brain through what? Through measurement of the electrical impulses, which is, by the way, created by the neurons or nerve cells. We know that neurons or nerve cells inside the brain, which resides inside the brain, are creating electrical impulses to communicate with each other. By doing the EEG, we are viewing the electrical, we are viewing the neural activity and the test itself is, has been used as non-invasive test. Means that we don't hook the electrodes directly to the brain. We just connect the electrodes to the patient's scalp. And from there, the electrodes transfers or transmits the signal to the amplifier, which amplifies it, make it readable. Be why? Because the EEG signal itself is a very small signal. It's a tiny signal. And usually, it is in microvolts. And if we want to display it as acquired in microvolt, we cannot display it in a readable format. That's why we send it to an amplifier, which amplifies it, send it to the display device, which allows the doctors to view the EEG and report it. The frequencies of interest on an EEG is up to 30 hertz, which indicates that we are interested in the frequencies of up to the beta frequencies, which uh, indicates the state of arousal. So, I mean, let us review back what are the main bands in the EEG, as we said, the main bands of EEG, it is the delta, which is less than 4 hertz. We have the theta, which is from 4 to 8 hertz. We have the alpha, which is from 8 to 14 hertz. And we have the beta, which is from 14 to 30 hertz. We do have two, the gamma wave, which is more than 30 hertz. But usually, gamma waves, it, it is not of clinical and physiological interest. That's, that's why, and therefore, it's often fil filtered out in the EEG recording. The signal range from 2 microvolt, which indicates a brain death, to several hundreds of microvolts. An electroencephalogram EEG machine has been, used, has been used for both medical diagnosis and neurobiological researches. It was developed first in the early 20th century, and uh, the name itself or the invention itself is being given a credit to the German scientist Hans Berger. The EEG machine continues to be improved. It means that from the time it was invented to the moment, the EEG machine has passed through many steps of improvement. It is thought that the machine itself will lead to a wide range of important discoveries, both in basic brain function as well as for the cures of the various neurological diseases. The essential components of an EEG machine are as shown here. We have the electrodes, we have the amplifier, the electrodes picks up the signal from the scalp, send it to the amplifier, which amplify it, and then it sends it to the PC control module, and then finally it is sent to the display device where it is displayed in a readable format where the doctors can read it and report it. Over the years, the EEG electrodes, amplifiers, and output devices, as I have mentioned, were improved. Today, EEG machines have multiple channels, computer storage memories, and specialized software that even can create an electrical map of the brain. The EEG machines have an amplifier of electrode connections up to 128 channels. Usually, we don't go for that. Usually, the, on, on, routine, uh, on routine EEG, we use something like, I mean, 21 electro channels. But modern amplifiers can have uh, 32 channels, 44 channels, 40 channels, 64 channels, and up to 128 channels, which can be used in research purposes, uh, purposes and in special cases. The basic systems of an EEG machine include the data collection, storage, display. The components of these systems include electrodes, connecting wires, amplifiers, computer control module, and a display device. So let us start with the basic components of, of an EEG test. The basic components which allow us 
to start making a new EEG test is the electrolyte. Electrolyte, it's a conducting solution, either be gel or paste, and it may be also a fluid of living tissues, as when the electrodes are inserted below the skin, it is salt solution, pr uh, principally sodium chloride. This means that the current flow within the brain becomes electron flow in the electrodes and electrode wires. And this is, by the way, sample of uh, paste. These are very some. These are very common paste, and especially this one, which is 1020 paste. It's very common and has been used by many manufacturers as a conductive solution. Since the electrical signal are weakly transmitted through the skin to the electrodes, an electrolyte paste, such as this one, or gel, such as this one, is typically needed. Why it's needed? The material is applied directly to the skin. It may be composed of a cosmetic ingredients like lanolin and chloride ions that help form a conductive bridge between the skin and the electrode, allowing better signal transmission. Electrodes, if we will learn what is the electrodes, it is a metallic part which is used for transmitting the electrical activity of the brain to the input circuit of the amplifier in the EEG machine. So these are sample of electrodes. These are sample of electrodes. And there are many types, by the way, of electrodes. You can use any one of them. Personally, I prefer the EEG gold cup electrodes, but there are many people who prefer uh, the silver ones, the tin uh, plated. The, uh, some people are preferring the silver chloride. There are many types. Some people even are uh, preferring the EEG cap electrodes. So it's up to the user to use the type of electrode which he prefers. The majority of electrodes are small discs of stainless steel, tin gold, or silver covered with a silver chloride coating. It is having a silver chloride coating. These normally have a lead attached. Alternative methods consist of, as I mentioned earlier, using a cap, as of these, which the, where the electrodes are already embedded inside it. Teflon is used as a coating for wires and various kinds of electrodes. So just to review back, what is electrodes? Electrodes are a metallic part, which is used for transmitting the electrical activity of the brain. And these electrodes are merged with the gel or paste, which is then connected to the patient's skin to ensure a better transmission of the electrical signal. There are many types of the EEG electrodes, as we can see here, as well as there are uh, ready-made caps where electrodes are embedded inside it. In order to understand how electrical current passes through metal electrolyte interface, we must know some basic of the electrical properties of the electrolyte. So the, the basic uh, the, the basic requirement on this page is just to understand how the electrical current passes through the uh, the metal electrolyte. That's why we need to know the basic of electrical properties of the electrolyte. Ions are particles in the solution that bear an electrical charge. So ions, it's a particle in a solution which bears an electrical charge. The fact that ions are free to move in the solution, so if applied voltage between two points in the solution, an electrical current can be made to flow in it. The current carried by ions in the solution in the same way that current is carried by losing electrons in a metallic conductor. And here, if we assume here, this is ions and this is electrolyte, this is electrons, and this is the metals. Metal, it is electrolyte interface. It is the junction where flow of ions is converted into flow of electrons. So the metal, it is the junction where the flow of ions is converted into flow of electrons. It is the place where an electrochemical phenomenon is converted into purely Electrical. So we have electrochemical converted into purely electrical phenomenon. Let us review what is the EEG amplifier. EEG amplifier, it has a minimum of 25 electrode inputs. 21 are usually hooked to the skull or connected to the skull. It has also some, uh, it has some other connections such as the system reference, ground and extra connections. The recommendations for 32 electrode inputs and the preferable is even sometimes goes beyond 40 or 44 
electrode connections. The input impedance should be greater than 10 mega ohms, and the common mode rejection should be at least 100 decibels for each point. The EEG amplifier, what it does exactly, it converts the weak signals from the brain. We know that the brain signals are generated by the electrical impulses. Electrical impulses generated by the neurons on the brain are very small. It is in microvolts. So in order to make it readable, these, I mean, microvolts are transmitted or transferred from the electrodes to the amplifier where it is converting the weak signal from the brain to more readable signal for the output device. There are differential amplifiers that are useful when measuring the relatively low level signal. In some designs, the amplifiers are set up of a pair of electrodes detects the electrical signal from the body. Wire connected to the electrodes transfer the signal to the first section of the amplifier, the buffer amplifier. Here, the signal is electronically stabilized, so the buffer amplifier stabilizes the signal and amplifies it by a factor of 5 to 10. A differential preamplifier is next on the line that filters and amplifies the signal by a factor of, one, of 10 to 100. After going through these amplifiers, the signal are multiplied by hundreds or even thousands of times. Since the brain produces different signals at different points on the skull, multiple electrodes are used. We do use multiple electrodes and we connect them to different points on the skull. The number of channels that an EEG machine has is related to the number of electrodes used. It means if I have a 40 channel amplifier, I can use up to 40 electrodes on this amplifier and hook it to the patient. The same applies for 44 or 64 and even up to 128 channels amplifiers. And in this case, we will not use the 1020 electrode placement system. We will use the 1010 or the extended 1020 electrode placement system. And by the way, the more channels we have, the more detailed the brainwave picture we get. For each amplifier on the EEG machine, as I said, there are two electrodes are attached. The amplifier is able to translate the different incoming signals and cancels ones that are identical. So we will not have an identical signals or duplicate signals. This means that the output from the machine is actually the difference in electrical activity picked up by the two electrodes. This is the principle of the amplifier. Uh, of the amplifier. It measures the potential difference or in EEG specifically, we measure the potential difference between two points, the active and reference. Therefore, the placement for, the, for each electrode is critical because the closer they are to each other, the less differences in the brain waves that will be recorded. Another hardware is used with the EG machine, which is called the photic flash. The flashing light device, it's a flashing light device, by the way, and it consists of a photic light, such as this one. where the intensity, frequency, and duration of the emitted light are operator controlled, meaning that we start with certain frequency values, such as, for example, 2 Hz, then for a specific time or period, like we give the patient 2 Hz for, for example, 10 seconds, or we give the patient 3 or 5 Hz for 10 seconds, then the photic stimulation pauses for other 10 seconds, so to differentiate between what we have given already to the patient and the next photic stimulation which will be given to the patient. So as I said, if we say, for example, we'll give the patient uh, 5 hertz photic stimulation, it will be for 10 seconds, then the photic stimulation will be paused for another 10 seconds, then the patient photic stimulation will be increased, for example, from 5 to 10 hertz, and so on. The photic, I mean flash, usually it is distance about a meter from the patient. And the stimulation is usually used as a part of routine EEG test and can provoke seizure in certain percentage of patients. Computer and software. Normally, medical grade computers are preferred to be used, which are tested and confirmed to be used in medical equipment. And also provide special functions and options which can be helpful in diagnosis of, of epilepsy, such as 3D brain mapping, such as spike and seizure detection, such as uh, sleep scoring. There are many options which, we, which can be added to the EEG software which can assist the doctors in their assessment of the patient cases. 
So by now we would have learned the fundamentals of EEG and in our next episode we are going to talk more. We are going to concentrate on the electronic side of EEG. We will talk about amplifiers, how the amplifiers are operating, what are the different types of amplifiers, what are the different types of montages used. For correction and addition, comments and feedbacks, I do welcome you to send it back to us at our email address displayed here, info at biomedresearches.com. 